Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how to run a latent growth curve analysis for free in the JASP software. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to show you something that I thought was very exciting when I found out about it, and that is how you can run a latent growth curve analysis for free using point and click in a really easy to use, user-friendly, convenient software that creates a very nice output for you that you can, at least some of it, you, of which you can use directly in a publication. And that is the JASP software, which you can download for free from the internet. You can see I already have JASP open here on my computer and I have a data file open with four variables that represent IQ scores measured on four different time points. And what I'm gonna do here as an example is I'm gonna fit a latent growth curve model to these four columns of data. Now, first of all, JSP is free, so you can download it from the internet and install it. And it also allows you to very easily import a variety of different types of data files in different formats. You can open SPSS data directly, you can open text files, you can open CSV files. And so that's very, very easily done here when you go to open and then computer, you can browse a folder on your computer and you can just simply open a data file in whatever format that JASP will accept. Now let's see where we can find the latent growth curve modeling option in JASP. And so you find that under SEM, structural equation modeling. And so the SEM module allows you to use the Lavan package in the free R software indirectly, so to say by using point and click. So it's a very clever way to use Lavan without having to write the actual Lavan syntax. And at the same time, you can learn about Lavan, which is a more flexible and more powerful program for SEM in general, because JASP allows you to save the model statement for whatever growth curve or other structural equation model you estimate here in this program using point and click. This also does factor models, so you can also do confirmatory factor analysis very conveniently in JASP and growth curve models are a specific type of confirmatory factor model for longitudinal data with constraints on the factor loadings. And so there's a special option for that here under SEM. When you go to the very bottom, you can see latent growth. And so that's what we will choose. Now, I have other videos here on this channel that describe the confirmatory and exploratory factor analysis options in JASP, which are also really great and user friendly. I also have a video on structural equation modeling in JASP in general. So feel free to check those out as well. Now let's click on latent growth. And then you can see on the left hand side, we have this um, input screen with our options for how we want to set up our latent growth curve model. On the right hand side, we will have the results, the output, and you can see that already JASP is preparing the relevant output tables that are empty right now because we have not specified the variables yet. But as soon as you pick your growth factor indicators from your variable list and you move them over into the variables field, JASP starts to estimate the growth curve model. So already you can see now the tables are filled with results and those results are for the default model, which is a linear growth curve model. You can see that by looking at the second table where you find that there's an intercept factor that is here labeled component and there's a linear slope factor for both of which JASP or Lavan really estimates the mean and variance as we would expect for a growth curve model. So this is a linear growth curve model 
by default. Later we will see that there are other options that you can also specify uh, non-linear growth functions here using the same software. Now let's start from the beginning here and let's take a look at what else we get in the output. You can see that there's a model fit chi-square table that is reported here first. And the first thing that is contained in this table is a baseline model chi-square for a model that assumes that there are no covariances between the four variables. So that would be the null model or independence model or however you want to call that. And that model is estimated here as well for comparison purposes. You can see it fits very poorly. It has a high chi-square over a thousand six degrees of freedom and the p-value is not even provided here. It's typically highly significant because typically a model that assumes zero covariances between the variables is not acceptable. The growth curve model here specifically the linear growth curve model has a chi-square that is much lower 4.435 indicating much better fit. It still has five degrees of freedom and a p-value of 0.489. So this indicates that the linear growth curve model is not rejected for the IQ data. It fits the data well, which means we can safely interpret the parameter estimates. You can see that there's a mean of the intercept factor. So that is the average model implied IQ score at the latent level at time one. So at time one, the latent score average was 100 with a variance of 209. And the linear slope has a mean of 1.49, so about 1.5. And that indicates that per unit of time, there was an average increase in IQ scores by about 1.5 points. So from time one to time two, for example, the average increase in IQ scores was 1.5. There was also variability around that mean growth and so that's given here as the variance component, the variance parameter for the linear slope factor, which is about 10. We also get standard errors for the parameters. There are Z statistics provided for tests of the null hypothesis that the parameter is zero in the population and p-values are given for the Z scores as well as 95% confidence intervals, which is very nice that JASP includes those by default. We also obtain the latent covariance between the intercept and slope factor, which is negative 9.826. That doesn't tell us very much right now because it's in uh, covariance and unstandardized uh, association parameter and that's very difficult to interpret unless, so say you take into account the variances, which here are very different, 209 versus about 10. So it's very hard to say whether this is a strong relationship or a weak relationship. All we can say is it's statistically significant, so it's not zero or significantly different from zero, and it's negative, meaning there's a negative association between the intercept and the slope factor. Later on, I will show you how you can get the standardized solution for a growth curve model, and that will be more informative with regard to the latent association between intercept and slope, because the standardized solution will give us the product moment correlation, which is standardized. Also, we get the unstandardized residual variance estimates in the next table, along with standard errors, Z statistics, p-values, and confidence intervals. So that's the default output that you get when you just simply click over a bunch of variables into this variables field. By default, you get a linear growth curve model, you get the chi-square fit, you get the unstandardized parameter estimates, and that's it. Now, if you want more, you have to go back to the left-hand side input screen. You have to go to um, some of these options here. So let's click on model options to see what else we can do. And so one thing is that you could fit a different type of growth curve shape. For example, a quadratic growth curve model simply by checking this box here. And then on the right hand side automatically the output will be adjusted. So now you get the fit for a quadratic growth model which you can see that 
um, that fits also. The p-value is actually a little bit worse because this model has more parameters and the linear model already fit well. So this is probably overfitting those growth curves with a quadratic uh, factor. You then see that the quadratic slope factor here has been added to the latent curve parameter estimates table and it gets a mean and a variance as well. And then there are additional covariances that are also provided. You can see that these have terribly high standard errors, which is an indication that this is really an over factorization or over parameterization. Here, the quadratic factor is not needed. A linear factor is sufficient. You could also do a cubic model that by clicking this button here, um, I'm going to uncheck the quadratic button again because um, it was too much. So that's um, not necessary. By default, the growth factors are allowed to co-vary. We already saw that. And now we can go to additional output to get other things that we may want to look at. For example, we might be interested in additional fit measures other than the chi-square. So if you want other fit statistics, you can check this box here, additional fit measures. And then in the output window, you will find at the bottom that there are multiple new tables that include all kinds of other fit measures, including comparative uh, fit statistics or incremental fit indices, the CFI, TLI, and others. There are also information criteria for model comparisons, as well as the root mean square error of approximation is given and additional fit indices that perhaps you would like to look at. You can also request R squared. So the a proportion of variance that the growth factors explain or account for in the observed variables. When we click on that, then we have to see where we can find R squared. At the very end, you can see there's a new table with R squared for all variables. You can, you can see in this case that over 80% of the variance in the IQ scores is accounted for by the intercept and slope factors. So that's very satisfactory showing that um, the growth factor reliability, so to say, is fairly high. There's not a lot of situation specific or other residual variance measurement error variance here. The growth factors account for a very substantial portion of the observed variable variances. We can also get the standardized parameter estimates by checking the next box on the left hand side. And then when you scroll up, you will find that the parameter estimates tables now have additional columns on the right hand side that contain the different forms of standardizations, one where only the latent variables are standardized, one where all variables are standardized, one where, where no exogenous variables are standardized, which here we don't have any predictor variables. So that's all in this case identical. And you can see that for um, the Factor correlation, that is informative. So for the latent covariances table, where we previously only saw the covariance, we now also find the correlation here at the end, which is much more easy to interpret. It's negative 0.215, showing us that there's a small to moderate negative correlation between the intercept and slope factor. So that's the standardized solution. You can also look at the implied, the model implied covariance matrix, the residual covariance matrix. And one thing that I find particularly useful is you can print the Lavan syntax. So specifically the model statement that comes with this model. And so when you scroll down all the way, you'll find that there's model syntax here generated by JASP. And so that way you can learn Lavan because really the thing that you want to do eventually is switch over to Lavan entirely because it's more flexible. It allows you to run more specific models, for example, also second order growth curve models or growth curve models with specific constraints or specific 
um, loadings that are freed up or something like that. So this is pretty limited to standard single indicator growth curve models. And so if you want to do more complex longitudinal growth models, then you should really eventually move over to Lavan. And there are some resources in the description too for how to get started with Lavan. If you want to check that out below in the show notes, you can find some workshops on how to learn Lavat. But so this is one way where you can copy that syntax here and then you could move it over into an R studio or something um, interface for R and you could then directly start working with Lavan. Also, we can obtain plots in JSP. So when you go to plots, you find that you can get a curve plot so you can display the growth curves here that are model implied. Um, takes a little while for JSP to generate that plot on in your output window. Here you can see, actually we can't see very much because 150 lines are printed here. You can set that lower to maybe see a little bit better what's going on. So you can have an example plot like that when you um, click over here again you can see now we have only 20 curves so it's a little bit easier to view those curves you can also generate a path diagram of your model by clicking on model plot and you could if you like you could um, include the parameter estimates in the plot and here we go so this is the model plot which is not the prettiest plot but perhaps something that is helpful to at least check that this is the model that you wanted to specify for the data. There are some more options here under advanced where you could select, for example, whether you wanted um, the output to conform to M plus or EQS. In this case, none is the default. I'm pretty happy with the output as is, so I would just keep it at that. You can also um, choose how to handle missing data. The default here is full information maximum likelihood, which is nice because that way you don't have to worry about missing cases. They will be included in the analysis automatically with full information maximum likelihood, which is the method of choice for growth curve models when you have missing data. You could choose listwise deletion here, but that is something that I would not recommend. And it's actually one advantage of Lavan and JSP that they have full information maximum likelihood estimation with missing data as the default option. You also can select different types of standard errors. So you could have robust standard errors or you could choose bootstrap standard errors and confidence intervals. You can pick a different type of estimator here on the right hand side. For example, when you have ordinal data, you could use the DWLS estimation method, which is appropriate for ordinal variables. So lots of options that you have for growth curve models, at least for basic growth curve models. Another nice feature is that these tables here already come in a format that is similar to APA style. So if you want to include something in a publication, you can pretty much exactly or, or simply copy those tables and then add them to your Word document and maybe make some edits, but it's pretty much already in APA format, which is nice. Thank you so much for joining me for this little tutorial on how to run a growth curve analysis in JASP. I hope you found it useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.